Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Molly and I'm Molly of Our Little Hicks. I'm so glad that you came to join me today for this video. And unfortunately, it's a bit of a scary slash important moral video I wanted to share with you guys today. It's the story about when I was five years old, a man attempted to abduct me at Walmart. It is a big act of bravery from a little girl, all caught on surveillance camera. To take that child, he failed. A seven-year-old left alone for just a moment. Her mother was just a couple of aisles over in Walmart, and she was almost abducted. That was the child trying to pick her up. County deputies say they want parents to talk with their kids about uh, the, the, how dangerous it can be to talk with strangers. So a disclaimer for this video, I do talk about the court hearing and everything that went into um, pressing charges on this man and all of his background that we found out afterwards and the harsh reality that in just a moment your child can be taken and in just a moment your child can be persuaded into going somewhere with someone that intends on possibly doing harsh things to your child. So I really implore you to speak with your children at all ages about not going with strangers, stranger danger, and really pushing your children to learn that not everyone is wanting you to be around them for their best interest. And I really implore you to just watch your children very closely at all times because like I said, it just takes a moment for something horrible to happen. And I, as a mother, could not imagine what it's like to lose your child or something harsh happen to your child. And I just really pray that God watches out for anyone's children who is watching this video and anyone that isn't. So let's go ahead and get into the story. I'm gonna start with a little backstory on how this all began, what happened that day to get us to Walmart and just everything that I can remember as a child and what my mother has told me. It all started in 2001. I was five years old and I was in school at the time, but I had been sick with a UTI, which is a urinary tract infection. I had those frequently. So I had went to the doctor and then we stopped at Walmart to fill my prescription, which is my medication. And while we were waiting for the prescription to be filled, we were just walking around Walmart. So according to my mother, she, it was me, my mom, my little sister who wasn't in school yet, and my mother's friend. And according to my mother, this man had been following us around. She just got an uneasy feeling. He wasn't being too aggressive with it at first, but he was just kind of, she had noticed him out of the corner of her eye, no matter where we had went. So she said that we were in the electronics and she noticed him following kind of at a distance, but still around. So that made her kind of nervous. And then what comes next is what really was the kicker and what sent us into this spiral. We ended up in the shoe aisle and as you know, they just have boxes of shoes everywhere. And in our town, we had a Walmart in 2001 that eventually was tore down. So that the Walmart that this all happened in is no longer even there. But I'm gonna try to insert a picture of kind of what the layout looked like. It was a shoe aisle. And at the end of the shoe aisle was a exit door that probably led to a stock room and then it would lead to outside. So what happened was I was in the shoe aisle with my mother, her friend, and my little sister. And my mother's friend walked to the aisle, end of the aisle that wasn't close to the exit. So the exit's on this side and the, the end of the aisle that led out to Walmart is on this side. So they walked to this side and they are just on the edge of the aisle where you, you're not in the aisle but you're on the edge, almost going around to the next aisle. 
And I, like the five-year-old I was, just decided I was gonna just sit down and try on a pair of shoes that I thought were cute. So I sat down, grabbed the shoes, and my mother and my, her friend and my sister walked around the aisle. And they were at the end, so she couldn't see me, and I don't think she even knew that I had sat down, and I was just kind of ditzy doing my own little thing. I sat down, and we're putting on these shoes, was putting on these shoes, and all of a sudden, when my mom is out of sight, I hear, hey, hey, twice. I hear a man say, hey, twice to me, very quietly in a man's voice. So I'll start looking around and I look behind me towards the exit doors, which my parent, my mom is on this side, way up here, and he's on this side, close to the exit door, kind of hiding behind the, the end of the aisle on the other end. He says, hey to me twice. And of course I turn around and look, and then he begins to motion for me to come to him. He wants me to come down the aisle to him close to the exit doors. Thank God that my mother had drilled in my head, stranger danger. My school had drilled in my head, stranger danger. Do not go to anyone that isn't someone that you know personally or that you're not with at that moment. And I wasn't next to my mom at that moment, but I knew that I wasn't with this man. So I turned to the man, he motioned for me to come to him, and then he would kind of crouch behind the aisle and just kind of wave to me to come to him. I immediately stood up and screamed for my mother. I didn't get my shoes, I didn't get anything. I just screamed, Mom! My mom immediately ran around the aisle and the guy had disappeared. He, I guess, just took off. And my mom came to me and I told her, there was a man at the end of the aisle yelling for me and she freaked out because she had already had that feeling in her mind. She had already been watching this guy. She knew immediately who the man was. She grabs me and goes to the nearest Walmart associate and she says, there's a man. He has been harassing us. He's following us and he just tried to take my daughter. He just tried to motion her to him. So the Walmart associate begins looking around for this man. And then my mom eyeballs him and he is in the men's section. Um, from electronics, you could see the men's section. And she said that he was hiding behind one of the tall, they used to have these circular, tall clothes racks. And she said that he was kind of like crouched by the clothes racks, hiding. She points him out and says, he's over there, you need to go and confront this man to the Walmart manager or associate. So the Walmart man brings the man over to us and confronts him and says, she says that you were harassing them and trying to take their daughter. And the man, is, my mom says the man just sits there wringing his hands all nervous and scared. And he says, oh no, I wasn't doing that. Of course he would say that. And the Walmart associate just tells the man, stop harassing customers and leave Walmart. So the man says, okay, and of course scurries away as fast as he could. And my mom said that's when the smoke came out of her ears. She was very upset and she said that is not all that's gonna happen to this man. He attempted to abduct my daughter. He could just go to the other end of the store and do the same thing to another child, especially if he's just gonna get a slap on the wrist. So she runs straight to the front of Walmart and there is a payphone in 2001 in the front of Walmart. So she goes to the payphone and she calls 911. That is when a police officer that we actually know pretty well, his name is Steve Rush. I wanted to just say his name because he is a wonderful officer and to this day I still remember him. Now he works at my nephew's school and anytime we drop my nephew off at school or pick him up we see him and I just still th thank Steve Rush to this day for being there quickly and doing his job efficiently. Such a profound police officer. So Steve Rush shows up at the scene, he's a police officer and he immediately 
goes and finds the man inside of Walmart and arrests him. Fast forward to, I was called to be a witness in the court hearing when this man was arrested. Come to find out this man was wanted in Cobb County for child molestation, convicted child offender, and he is on the sex registry list. I have, and unfortunately, this was not the first time this man has tried this. So they asked me to come into court and witness against this man and testify. So I was brought into the courtroom at five years old. My parents were not allowed to be in there with me for some reason. We all waited outside and then they came and got me by my hand and brought me in. They put me on the stand. And I remember specifically the judge asking me, what the man looked like and I could tell him what he looked like. He asked me what he was wearing that day. I told him it was a red baseball cap, a blue shirt and blue jeans. I remember that specifically. And of course they decided, the judge decided with all the evidence, the evidence was what I had said, what my mom had said, the cameras, could only see him crouched down. They couldn't see him motioning for me, but they did see all of my actions, me turning towards him, screaming for my mother. They seen all of that take place. They saw him hurry off into the men's section, but they couldn't see him motion for me. So he didn't get charged for that, but he was banned from county at that time by the judge. And the judge said that and they shipped him off to Cobb County where he was tried for the molestation case and he was convicted for that. He, I think he was, ended up being on the sex registry list. I think he did serve some time for that. My dad kept up with him thoroughly. He was very um, upset about it all and wanted to keep track of the man. But it was a crazy event. I remember going onto the stand and I was kind of frazzled once I realized what was going on. I didn't know the extent of molestation case, but I did know that the man was trying to take me from my mother and that really jolted me as a child to know that. And to this day, I have looked him up because I wanted to tell this story and heed all parents to really pay attention to their children and just watch her remove because it just takes a moment for someone to take advantage of a child. And I looked him up and he apparently is still living a town over and he's still on the sex registry list and he's been arrested for parole violations, for not, um, for not registering, all kinds of things. And he is still struggling to this day with the things he's got going on in his life. Thankfully, my story was a good story. I did not end up getting hurt by this man. I ended up doing the right thing, but there it could have easily went the wrong way. He could have easily persuaded me if I had been just a little more off my guard as a five-year-old. And it's not hard for a five-year-old to be off their guard. A five-year-old isn't meant to make quick, in rash decisions but thankfully at five I was at the age where somebody was telling me constantly don't go to strangers my school was having events for stranger danger and drug prevention and all these things so thankfully it turned out well for me it could have not turned out well very easily thank God for my mother who didn't just let that go because he could have walked away from there and not had went to Cobb County where he had these charges pending. He could have never went through any of this. If we could have let an offender go super easily and he would have been gone without a trace. I pray daily that he doesn't offend anymore. I pray for him that he has changed. I know that this man in particular might not be a threat to any of you, but there's tons of people out there like this man. And I urge you to just pay close attention. It can be anyone. So just pay attention to your children. Have a close eye. Be alert. 
watch odd things around you and just stay safe out there guys thank you for watching this video i know that it might not have been enjoyable but i just hope that it was informational and i find it really crazy to this day that i can remember so much about that time being five years old because i swore i was like nine or something to my mom because i didn't think that a five-year-old could remember so much but it was traumatic so i'm pretty sure that i could remember that because it was just traumatic to me going on to a witness stand and being asked all these questions about what he did they asked me about him motioning for me and all kinds of things and i just thank god that it was the better situation than the harder situation and i We'll see you guys in the next video. Please leave a comment below or subscribe for more videos. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye. God bless you.